Aloha and welcome to Hawaii Together on the ThinkTech Hawaii Broadcast Network. I'm Kelee Akina, a trustee in the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. However, I'm here today in my own personal capacity to share with you a wonderful friend who's joining the program today. But first, I'd like to think back to my days on the Waianae Nanakuli Coast. That's some of the most beautiful land in all of the world. Take a look at the stretch of beach that goes for mile after mile. Beautiful ocean, lovely mountains, wonderful people. I'll always remember my days there, and that's where I started my professional life as a young youth worker, working with Hawaiian and other young people. Now today, I'm so delighted that I have a young man who is taking the helm at leading his community. He's a product of the Waianae Nanakuli Coast, and he's experienced what a lot of people have over there, some of the challenges, but he's turned those challenges into hope. My guest today is gonna to talk with us about the nature of the coast, the conditions of the people, what is going on, what we can do to build a great future for everyone there. And I'd like you to meet him now. Please welcome Diamond Garcia. Diamond, welcome to the program. Aloha, Kelly. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm really honored to be here. Well, Diamond, it's just great to have you on the program. In fact, you're right there now on the Nanakuli Coast. Tell me where you are in particular. Absolutely. I'm here in Nanakuli on Helalua Street in my apartment here. Um, I'm maybe about one block from the beach. so <laughs> I know that place well. <laughs> it's it's yes. not very far from my old stomping grounds at the Nanakuli High School and a little there church there where I used to bring young people, Nana Ikapono Protestant Church. Uh, yeah, on First Road, absolutely. <laughs> That's great. Now, you've kind of grown up on the coast, but you've been to the mainland and back. Tell me a little bit about your upbringing and what you faced as sure. a young person. Sure, yeah. So, you know, born and raised here on the leeward side of Oahu my whole life, uh, in and out of housing, um, public housing programs, um, was on welfare, food stamps growing up. So I was raised in a typical West Side life, I guess you could say. Um, a life of hardship. My dad was a drug dealer out here. You know, he sold drugs. And so growing up, I just had a mindset that when you get older, that's just what adults do. And so hmm. Um, I, I soon realized, you know, that was not the case and that my, my life wasn't really a normal life. Um, unfortunately, it was in the norm out here because I had lots of friends where their parents did the same thing as well. So growing up, uh, my, my mind was warped a little bit and um, it wasn't until something happened later in my life that it, it, it really changed at all. So, Wow, that's quite a disclosure, Diamond. And you, you're so free to talk about your upbringing when you were young, but obviously Absolutely. something must have happened. Sometimes people yes. say the conditions that they were raised in determine their future. It was That certainly wasn't the case exclusively in your life. What made the difference? What has not at all, not at all. Yeah. So, so a uh, long story short. So at the age of 12 years old, um, it, it was summer break and I was at my grandmother's house. Now my grandma loves to cook. She cooks, I mean, she cooks and bakes and she just loves to be in the kitchen. So um, I was at her house during a summer break and I was bored. And so I was going through a bunch of boxes in her closet and there was a box of cookbooks. And so uh, for a few hours, I was just scrolling through cookbooks, looking at recipes, looking at pictures. However, I got to the bottom of this box of cookbooks. And on the bottom of this box was a book called The Great Controversy. And so I picked it up. I said, you know, this this book is interesting because it's not a cookbook. <laughs> and uh, the front cover uh, startled me, actually. It, it was a picture of the world on fire. And I said, what in the world is this book about? And so I opened to the um, front to the first page. And the first words in the book were, if thou hadst known. And I said, what in the world does that mean? It makes no sense to me. And so I put the book away and I went on playing that day. I was only 12 years old, but that evening I came back into my grandma's house from playing and I saw the book lying there. And so I picked it up again. And this time I went to the back of the book because that's where the pictures were. And uh, I saw this picture of a man in the sky with a bunch of things around him. And I had no clue what this was. Um, and so I began to read that chapter it was called God's People Delivered. And I read about the second coming of Jesus Christ. And I was like, wow, this is an amazing event. 
And so long story short, I read through the entire book in three to four days. And uh, I went to church that next weekend. And from that point on, um, I've been involved in my churches, in the preaching circuits around Hawaii um, and the country and internationally as well. What a turnaround. And it seems that faith made the big difference in your life. Absolutely. What are, what are some of the challenges that young people like yourself face growing up on the Waianae and Nanakuli coast? Well, I think, uh, you know, one, one of the most common is being told from a young child that, you know, you're not going to go too far in life. I mean, mm -hmm. your parents were on welfare and food stamps. You're going to be on welfare and food stamps. You're not going to go to college. We don't have any money, you know. And so just being raised in this environment, you think, well, it, all hope is gone. There's, there's no future for me. But as I read that book, The Great Controversy, I read stories about powerful men throughout history like Martin Luther in the 1500s who stood up for what he believed in and started a revolution in Europe. I read stories about John Wycliffe, whose life was at stake for translating the Bible from, uh, from Latin into the common language. And uh, he stood up for, for what he believed in and changed the world around him. And so the book inspired me to, to, to simply say, Diamond, you know what? Just because you're in public housing programs, just because you were homeless once upon a time, just because you were on welfare and food stamps and all these other handouts from the government, it doesn't mean you have to stay there. This is the greatest country in the world. And we have so many opportunities that's available to us, especially if you're lower income. There's so much scholarships and grants and all these different types of things available to us. And so I said, you know what, Diamond? You are going to rise up and change the world around you and not allow the world around you to change you. Now, Diamond, you really took your life in your hands and, and made something of yourself very quickly after that. You went on, you finished your education, you went to college. Absolutely. You work now. Yeah, you know, so... Yes. Uh huh. You work no, no, now yeah. so, at the so, state state capital, and you are uh -huh. a member of your neighborhood board. So yes, tell us a little absolutely. bit about what you're doing in the community. Sure, sure. So currently, um, I uh, serve on the Nanakuli Maili neighborhood board. I am a board member. However, all that I say today is uh, not uh, a reflection of the board. It's uh, myself as a private citizen. But yes, I do sit on the the. the neighborhood board out here. I also um, am the office manager for Representative Gene War, the House Minority Leader here in the state of Hawaii. And uh, so I really enjoy what I do. For the last few years, about three to five years, I've been tra traveling the world, preaching the gospel of Christ on multiple continents. And I still am totally involved in that today. I I'm, I'm constantly traveling, flying here, flying there, uh, just preaching the gospel. And so it, it really is an a privilege to both serve God first and foremost and people around the world with the gospel and then also to serve my community which I view as a ministry. What are the kinds of things you're involved in in your community? Tell me a little bit sure, about so your, there, your vision of the kinds yeah. of changes you'd like to see happening in Nanakuli. Well you know uh, one of the, the, the top things um, on my bucket list of really addressing here on the west side um, is crime first and foremost. You know, crime uh, has been increasing statewide. I mean, every single day you look in the news nationally and, and locally, there's shootings and killings and robberies and all these different things. But crime has also escalated here exponentially on the Waianae Coast, just on my street, Hellelua Street. Um, a, a, a few weeks ago, there was a shooting. Down the road in Waianae, there is a shooting where father and son died. So crime has been rising exponentially here on the Waianae coast. And so I really think that we should get to the root cause of, of, of these crimes and uh, not just uh, address the symptoms. You know, politicians really like to address the symptoms and they never hit the root cause to things. And, and that's one of the reasons why our state is uh, currently in the state it's in. <laughs> Well, we could be talking about crime, we could be talking about poverty, we could be talking yep. about drug abuse, alcoholism, uh, absolutely. Uh, abusive families, and so forth. But you seem to sure. bring it all back to a common core. You use the term root cause. What do you mean yes. by root cause of these kinds of problems? Well, you know, um, when you go to the doctor's office um, and you have high blood pressure or you have high cholesterol and you say, doctor, you know, my heart's hurting, I have this and this or whatever's going on, 
the doctor can prescribe you medication to address the symptoms that you're currently facing. However, if you don't change your lifestyle and perhaps eat a, a more healthier lifestyle, the problem is, is still going to arise over and over and over again to the point where we're dependent upon the prescription to keep you alive. In the same way, if the state doesn't address the root cause of the problems here in our state, the people will continue to be dependent upon the government to keep them in a state of survival. Well, obviously, then you are inferring that the state does a lot of activity to mm -hmm. prescribe solutions to people, but they only deal with the symptoms, not the really root, Correct. root causes. So Correct. what is the root cause of the problems that people face in our state? Well, you know, I mean, for, for each person, it's dumb. There are, you know, families have different circumstances, of course. But I, I think we really have to um, hit the kids when they're in elementary school, when their brains are still a sponge and their characters are still being molded, you know. Um, and to really go into schools or churches or the, or the basketball teams or teams, and really tell these kids, you know what, just because you were born in this environment, just because you were, your parents were so-and-so or your siblings are so-and-so, you don't have to be there. You can become anything you want to be as long as you put your mind to it. It sounds as though you're saying people really need to learn to believe in themselves, to have a Absolutely. vision, to have hope, Absolutely. to aspire to become something great. It's something that you've done yourself. Is that what you mean when you talk about the root cause, reaching down into what human, what motivates individuals and reaching them when they're young? Absolutely. You know, and, and also, um, like, um, like what was, what was mentioned earlier by you, lots of abuse here on the Wine Coast, whether it's sexual abuse or physical abuse or verbal or mental abuse, there's lots of abuse. And many of the kids are simply acting out on, um, on their abuse, you know, they can't cope with, with, with certain things. And so they turn to drugs or alcohol to mask the symptoms, to mask the symptoms while, while trying to suppress the root cause as to why they're doing this, which they're doing. And so we really have to dig deep. It's kind of like an onion, you know, just peel layer after layer off to help people realize the, the core of their issues, address the core, and believe me, people on this coastline can go super far in life, super far. Lots of smart kids out here, extremely smart, brilliant, and talented. We just have to get to the root cause, address the issue, and allow them to be the person they truly are and watch them go far in life. We're going to take a short break, Diamond. And when we come back, I'd like to talk about some of the challenges that people who do live on the coast face. Talking about the economy sure. in part, lifestyle. Sure and other things, including some of the isolation that gets in, gets uh, exacerbated whenever there are traffic accidents on Farrington Highway. Oh, yes. But uh, <laughs> don't go away, and, because I like your mana'o and your wisdom on these thoughts, these ideas. And we'll be right back. I'm Kili'i Akina on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network with my guest, Diamond Garcia. We'll be right back after this. Aloha, y'all. My name is Mitch Ewan. I'm from the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. I'm the host of Hawaii, the state of clean energy. We're on every Wednesday at four o'clock, and we hope that we have interesting uh, guests who talk to us about various energy things that are happening in Hawaii, all the way from PV to windmills to hydrogen, close to my heart, electric buses and electric vehicles. So please dial in every Wednesday at four o'clock on Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Lillian Kumi, host of Lillian's Vegan World, the show where we talk about veganism and the plant-based diet located in Honolulu, Hawaii. I'm a vegan chef and cooking instructor, and I have lots of uh, information to share with you about how awesome this plant-based diet is. So do tune in every second Thursday from 1 p.m. Aloha. Thanks for being back with us. I'm Kili'i Akina on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. My guest, Diamond Garcia, is a great example of how somebody has faced challenges in his life and has now become a young leader in his community trying to work for great change. Now, some of those changes have to deal with the
the economy itself. And we're going to talk a little bit about that as I return now to Diamond. Diamond, welcome back to the program. And thanks for hanging out with me. How would you well, describe you, the how would you describe the economic conditions of the Waianae Coast, in particular Nanakuli, where you live? Well, the current state, unfortunately, it's poor economically. However, there is a extreme potential on the Waianae Coast. Poor, but with extreme potential. And we talk about that Absolutely. poverty. What what contributes to it? Uh, it? I can think of one thing, just in particular, working with young people. When the summer mm -hmm. months came, there was nowhere really in Nanakuli to get jobs. I mean, you could count, yeah. on, count on two hands the jobs that teenagers could actually <laughs> find. And that, right. what that meant is that teens would either have to find transportation to the other side of the island or right. just get into mischief. And, and uh, I, some people have fought long and hard, however, to prevent certain forms of economic activity. What do you think? Do you think we need more economic activity in Nanakuli in Absolutely. particular? And what, what kind Absolutely. of activity would that be? Well, you know, there is a huge potential for farming out here. Some of the best ag land is here on the west side. And uh, a lot of the land is not being utilized, unfortunately. Uh, and we could perhaps be self-sustaining out here with, with produce and other types of agriculture. Um, you know, farming is a hard, it's a hard thing. And lots of, uh, you know, parents who have kids who are raised on the farm see how hard it is uh, and how, how much labor it is it takes to really be fruitful uh, on a farm. And lots of the kids nowadays don't want to, you know, go into the family profession per se. But I think, uh, and, you know, I will continually push for agriculture here on the Wine Ankles because there's so much potential in that field out here. Um, secondly um, is vocational programs in our schools. I think if we would simply... Um, uh, I, well, for, 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 first and foremost, I'm a huge uh, proponent and supporter of educational choice um, and various types of education. Um, and unfortunately, Common Core has really ruined our uh, school systems. Um, every school should adapt to the environment it's in. 80% of all the graduates on the Waianae Coast end up in blue collar fields of, of, of work whether it's construction, whether it's carpentry, mechanics, or whatever it is, they end up in blue collar work. 20% end up in white collar work. And that's totally fine. White collar is no better than blue collar. I mean, they're, they're, they're totally fine. However, we, uh, our, our schools are focusing on something called STEM, right? Science, technology, engineering, mathematics. And I say, you know, that's great. That's really good. But we have to include something else in there. And so I, I push for something called STEAM, S-T-E-A-M, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Um, whether it's the various arts in schools, music, or, or whether it's wood shop or, or metal work or mechanics in schools, if we can prepare our kids to have skills under their belt when they graduate, they'll have no problem finding a job because they're already equipped with skills. In fact, there are businesses in this district, in this house, District 43 in Camwell Industrial, who are saying, we really need workers. We really need workers. And they would really love to train kids in high school to do what, what their job consists of. But unfortunately, the, the DOE is uh, making it hard for that to happen. But if we could simply include vocational programs in our schools, we could see an economic boom uh, statewide and, of course, here on the Waianae Coast. So one of the things that you're saying is that the way we educate young people now doesn't match them to the pragmatic needs uh, of their career. In other words, no. they, they're not getting the training that will actually land them into the kinds of professions and jobs and careers that, that right. will really make them a livelihood. That problem has to be solved. You mentioned exactly. something a little earlier, and I wanted you to explain that for our viewers. You said you're a proponent mm -hmm. of something called educational choice. Now, yes. what exactly does that mean? And, and what would it look like for people living in Nanakuli? Sure, sure, absolutely. Well, you know, uh, the average person, of course, you know, gets married, have has children, uh, and they, you know, as the child matures, they normally send their kid to the local public school. 
Uh, and I've talked to many parents out here on the Waianae Coast here in Nanakuli who are simply not happy with the education their, their children are receiving at the local public school. And so I'm a huge proponent of choice. And, and, and what that means, parents ought to have the choice to choose what type of education their child will receive. Whether it's public school education, then that's fine. Whether it's charter school education, that's fine. Whether it's Hawaiian immersion school education or private education or even homeschooling. Parents ought to have the freedom to choose what type of education their children receives. Currently, we pay taxes for our education of, of young people. Yes. And there's generally one option to go to the public school that happens That's to right. be in your That's right. region, unless you get some kind of district exemption from that. Sure. And, you know, uh, so public school, of course, under the, the DOE comes the Charter School Commission as well. Um, and here in Nanakuli, there is a charter school. It's Kavaihona Elementary School. Um, and... Hawaiian immersion is involved. However, there is a inequity involved here because you see in the public school systems the the DOE funds the schools 10,000 per pupil or 10,000 per student. In the charter school system, the the DOE funds them 7,000 per pupil and it doesn't include money for meals. It it does not in include funds for transportation. And so the schools aren't uh, being equally funded per se. And so uh, we need to really work on that um, because, you know, charter schools should be an option for parents out here. In addition, charter schools don't have the facilities that the regular public Correct. schools have as well. So it makes Correct. it somewhat cost prohibitive to really run a charter school that meets the needs of a community. Right. Now, right. there are social challenges that you've faced and others in the community face out there in Waianae and Nanakuli. Mm -hmm raising a family, being in a family, and so forth. What are some of these challenges that young people face growing up in the home, and what can be done about that? Well, you know, uh, some of the challenges here um, is just the environment in general. Um, if, if you go to a public school, you will be exposed to things as a parent that you wouldn't want your kid exposed to, but unfortunately, it's, it's just the environment out here. Uh, other kids, you know, smoking weed in, in, in fourth, fifth grade, um, drinking alcohol early on, experimenting with drugs, crystal meth, cocaine, all sorts of things. And I know because I went to, to public school myself and from a very early age, I used to go into the uh, boys restroom in like fourth grade and see kids smoking weed in there, you know? So the, the circumstances around kids here on the Waianae Coast um, sometimes seems as if the deck is stacked against them. And that's why I, I'm so um, so passionate about talking to kids early on in elementary schools, inspiring them saying, hey guys, just because these things are happening around you, it doesn't mean you copy and you follow. The best people in the world aren't followers, they're leaders. And so take your life, lead, look forward and move forward and you can and will become anything you wanna be. Well, and you've been an example of that. I do want us to mention uh, before leaving the subject of public schools that there are also some wonderful things that are happening in the public schools in Nanakuli in that public school Oh, absolutely. Complex, absolutely. Such as at Nanakuli High School. There is an openness to external programs. I know there was one I was involved in a bit, and that was Teach for mm -hmm. America that brought in teachers from outside of the community to help su wow. support and supplement the teachers that are in the community. So. The options for school choice actually include not only charter schools and private schools and, and so forth, but also include the public school itself, different Absolutely. options uh, that can be offered within it. Now, sure. I'm sure you've dealt with this uh, as you've grown up. There are certain stereotypes of young people mm. who come out of Nanakuli, and many of those stereotypes <laughs> are simply not true whatsoever. Uh, so, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they hang on people, though. What are some yeah. stereotypes that you have been confronted with that you would like to see erased and eliminated and definitely young people of Nanakuli not believing in, in themselves? Well, you know, some of the stereotypes, uh, I, I think the 
connotation that people have is what good can come out of Nazareth, right? What good can come out of the Waianae Coast? I mean, all the kids out there are exposed to criminal activity. They're probably smoking weed early on. Their parents have issues. They're raising or they're raised on food stamps and, and welfare. Therefore, they're more prone to, to thievery or, or, or to criminal things. Um, I've had uh, the uh, stereotypes myself, you know, just uh, working in a professional environment and people say, oh, you're from Waianae. Ah, so, you know, so apparently that means uh, something's different about you if you're from the Waianae Coast. Well, I think you, you certainly have shown that no stereotype is true in and of itself because it's what the individual decides to become in his or Absolutely. her life that makes the ultimate difference. That's right. Diamond, you're also part Native Hawaiian. And yes. Nanakuli happens to be the most densely populated Native Hawaiian region on the planet. That's right. Uh, one of the reasons happens to be because of the extent of Native Hawaiian homestead land. What are some of the challenges Native Hawaiians face and how are they being handled now on the Nanakuli? Well, planet? you know, um, one of the huge challenges besides economic instability um, and housing, one of the huge challenges which I think really should be addressed is the health of Native Hawaiians. Unfortunately, if you ask the State Department of Health, who has the worst health st statistics on the island or in the state, they'll tell you the Native Hawaiian population. Mm. And in fact, here on the Waianae Coast, extreme high rates of high blood pressure, extreme high rates of type 2 diabetes, extremely high rates of of depression itself. So mental and physical health is very low and poor in the, in the Native Hawaiian community. And so it's, I, I'm very passionate about addressing the health of our people. That's fantastic. We've come to the end of our program and I just wanna give you about 30 seconds to talk to those young people who are out there who may be listening. What word sure. would you have for other young people? Don't stop fighting, don't stop fighting. I was born and raised on the streets just like you. I wasn't uh, raised with a silver spoon in my mouth. I know the struggle, but if you work hard and you put your mind to things and you don't stop fighting, you will become what you want to be. Trust in God, love your family, work hard, God bless. Well, Diamond, thank you so much. I'm very proud of you and I know you're gonna go far. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Kili'i. My guest today is Diamond Garcia. I know all of you are going to hear a lot more about him in the years to come. I'm Kaylee Akina with the ThinkTech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Until next time, aloha.